understand that? I'm confused. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Game Trade Media for painting happy little minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And we are going to be painting some Song of Ice and Fire minis. We are, yes. Mm. Uh, so just recently, some uh, the Stormcrow mercenaries. So some more of the neutral faction were released. All right. Um, the neutral faction are cool because you can either field an entire army of mercenaries mm -hmm. or you can include them in your own faction. Ah, uh, the so other, your other army. So you can, that's nifty. You could run them with Starks. You could run them with Lannisters, Baratheons. Um, free folk. Hmm. Oh, maybe not free. I'm not sure. I have to check on that one. But uh, quizzing yeah. you now. Oh, no! <laughs> I can't remember it now. Uh, but uh, yeah, so these guys. Um, I, I'm particularly keen to uh, put some paint on these guys because I've only read up to like halfway through the second book. All right. For Song of Ice and Fire, and uh, Song of Ice and Fire, the game is based on the books. Uh, oh. So the Stormcrow mercenaries didn't really. Mm -hmm. appear in the, they weren't called out sort of heavily in um, the show. Uh, so I don't really know who these guys are. Oh, that, you hear that chat? No spoilers. No, no, spoilers galore. Go for <laughs> it. Feel free. <laughs> who do we have in the chat? We, uh, we have quite a few people. And uh, thanks for joining us, guys. We have Byron, we have Dave, we have Craig, we have Carl, we have Dave again. <laughs> Dave twice. So uh, Dave. And we have uh, Dave in YouTube. We have a and, lot of Daves. Uh, and Kat and Walt. Excellent. How's it going? Yep. Dave is a super common name. <laughs> I will just say it right here and now. Um, we're also going to be doing a giveaway, aren't we? We are indeed. Um, oh, actually, actually, I'm just going to check with Leona. Uh, Leona, is it one giveaway of two boxes? Yeah. Like, to, two boxes to one person. Uh, is that correct? <laughs> okay, we have two. <laughs> we have two boxes. We'll have one go to one person and one go to another? Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Okay, I so understand two now. winners. Two winners. <laughs> two boxes, two winners, one hashtag. That hashtag is? Who can guess what it's going to be for the Stormcrow mercenaries and the Stormcrow <laughs> archers? Wait for it. Wait for it. Hashtag Stormcrow. All right. So make sure that you use that hashtag in the chat <laughs> if you want to be in the running to win either of these. Yep. Exactly. So um, I think on we've got... Oh, actually, let's... I'm going to steal your banner bearer there Are you for a second. Steal it? Sorry. Stolen. All right. Stolen. I'm just going to pop him on I the spinner. I see how it is, Dave. See so that is. we can have a quick look at these dudes. Um, assume, of course, Leona has the camera. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, yeah, the, um, got a very interesting kind of. Uh, it's not quite quilted um, armor. I'm just going to have a quick look at the. It looks like kind of leather say. worked armor. It does. Um, definitely, yeah. Qu uh, leather work in, a, in kind of a quilted style. Yeah. But um, yeah, it might be little plates of extra leather sewn on top of the jerkins or something like that. Yeah. Um, just additional thickness. Uh, it's, it's some of the, I think the styling of it is very similar to some of the. Um, oh, now I'm completely forgetting them. I'm blanking. The Night's Watch. Yeah, that would make sense. So, uh, particularly as I think this guy coming around uh, reminded me of uh, Jon Snow towards the uh, the end of the series. But, I like uh, the hair blowing in the breeze. That, that probably helped, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but one thing I, I like about these guys as well is the uh, the shape of the shield. Mm -hmm. So it's a cut down shield, so it's lighter, it's gonna be faster to move around. Mm -hmm. um, shows that they're a, a little bit more uh, skilled in their swordsmanship. I would suggest. I would say so. Okay, cool. Say. Hooray! Yeah. I picked it. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this guy. I'm the worst person to ask who would win in a sword fight versus this style or this style because you know what I'm gonna no. tell everyone every single time, whichever person has studied more, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the better swords person. The better swords person will win <laughs> for sure. Um, just quickly, I'm gonna throw up these models here. I won't throw up. I'm going to place these carefully on the Tesla spinner. There we go. <laughs> We're all tired from PAX because we had a great time there. Yes, I'm not, I'm not as tired from that. I'm tired from other things, but uh, <laughs> oh, okay. 
Okay. He's, well, I was only there Friday. That's, that's why. But uh, the, these Storm Crow arches look very cool, too. Um, great leather armor. Um, bows look great. And I love the, the posing, particularly of this guy. That's a good pose. I, I like the tension that, that you can see in his back. Yep. I feel like that's yeah. really hard to do with all of the um, all the armor on, is to really right. get that sense of tension. Yeah. Um, but no, the sculptor's done a great job. Yeah, definitely. So look, very nice. Nice indeed. But yes, Pax. Pax. We were there. We were there. We did a painting Happy Little Minis episode. Um, at PAX. That was with, which was, with Tommy? That was with Tommy and uh, from Laugh Finder, uh, the Pathfinder uh, comedic podcast, and cool. then Patrick from WizKids. Awesome. And Excellent. we painted My Little Ponies. I you saw that. It. No, you, I saw it. You missed I, I it. I was there, hiding. Gone forever. <laughs> Gone forever. <laughs> You weren't uh, painting with me, so it didn't count. This is true. This, you cheated on us. I didn't cheat on you. You did. Not at you were all. painting with others. I did paint with others. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't help myself. There was painting going on, so I needed to do some. I painted with, um, with our friend Jason from uh, Realmsmith TV. Uh, we painted with Vallejo Paints, and we painted uh, WizKids Minis. Well, actually, we painted just one. Everybody. It was kind of a, a wild thing. We had 40 people. Lined up in a like almost like a tutorial kind of approach. That is so many. I know it was ridiculous. That's like if we had all of the chat and then some every single time in a live studio audience. In a live studio <laughs> audience, that would be pretty amazing. And they all had paints and minis and brushes and that kind oh, of thing. Oh man, it was insane. But we painted the shambling mound. Okay. Which was really cool. Um, the way that Jason organizes those is he, he paints a model, be, paints the model beforehand, works mm -hmm. out like a short list of paints. So we probably okay. had like eight or nine paints. And um, everybody uh, sort of gets to squeeze some of that out on their palette and go through the, the steps that he's, uh, he's created over the course of the, the two hours. This is gonna sound really silly, but just bear with me. It sounds a lot like the same, because I used to work for a sip and paint. Okay. The setup sounds the exact right. same, like you do for like the wine and paint nights. Pretty much, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was very much like that. Uh, the uh, the fun thing, of course, was that uh, because I wasn't a student in the class, I didn't really have to follow the the um, the step by step, and I could go down my own path. Oh, that's fun! Yep, Jason did his own thing. I did my own thing. Sometimes you just gotta color outside the lines. Exactly. So that's what I did. But I used uh, it was great using exactly the same color palette, though. Yeah. Um, it was just just fun to, to do something different. I'm gonna pop him back over there with you. Oh, you give me my mini back? Uh, yeah, I'm, I was about to start on it, and it was like, oh wait, wait, hang on. <laughs> this is Gretchen's. Gretchen should work on her own. Oh. But uh, yeah, so that was a that was a lot of fun painting up a shambling mound. Um, Jason and a couple of other people have commented that uh, rather than the dark sort of swampy look that they'd created, mm. that mine looked a little bit more like um, rotting bok choy. Oh. So. That wasn't the description that. that I was expecting. <laughs> no, no, nor was I, but that's the <laughs> one we sure got. I'm sure they meant it as a compliment. <laughs> you know what, who doesn't want to be told something they've created or worked on, or maybe even their person, like, Dave, today you look like rotting bok choy. <laughs> I look and like, you I, just... I feel like rotting bok choy. <laughs> you hear that, and you're like, that sure is the compliment for me. <laughs> yep, that's what I needed to hear today. Thank you very much. Uh, but, uh, uh, Kat Swift has a, uh, says, Okay, Dave, you have taken me to the dark side from terrain to minis, working on my first two chromatic zombie unicorns and the horrified folks. Oh, fantastic. Great. We'll need to see some photos in the group, Kat. You know that. You know that's how it works. That's, uh, that's awesome. There are some questions on Facebook. Ooh. Oh, got questions as well? What do we got? All right. Well, I, gotta, I gotta scroll. There, there's too many hashtags. <laughs> I hope they're all Stormcrow. Uh, Nothing? Sorry. It sounds like Leona's rolling dice and tearing paper in the other <laughs> room. Leona got so bored uh, just sitting there watching our antics that Leona started up a whole D&D &D group <laughs> while filming. Um, Didn't like her first character, tore it up the sheet, <laughs> started again. That would be funny. 
refresh this so I can try to get to the... Get to the questions? Get to the questions. Oh, it's going to refresh me to a different page. Okay. I can technology, folks. <laughs> it's fine. I think awesome. someone just asked, what was your favorite part of PAX? Oh, that's easy. That's a good question. My favorite part of PAX. Um, I got to see a bunch of fun people. And I'm a people person. And if you can't tell, my voice is scratchy from being a bit too much of a people person <laughs> on hearing PAX. But I got to hang out with people that I don't normally get to hang out with. And I got to play some fun games with people. And uh, I mean, it was, it was just a blast. Like. I'm the kind of person that if you bring me and you pop me into the middle of a convention, I'm just like, ah, people. <laughs> that exact voice. Nice. Sorry. That's okay. You doing all right? Yep. Excellent. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, what about you? For me? Um, actually, it was funny. I, I had um, a friend of mine just sent me a quick message the other day and said, what was your, the favorite thing, favorite thing you saw at PAX? And I said, People people mostly. I feel like you just stole my answer. Well, no, I borrowed it. Well, <laughs> if I'd stolen it, I would have, should have stolen it earlier, right? Yeah. Before you got to use it. But, so now it just looks, looks like I'm copying. But no, it was definitely, uh, definitely people. Um, I think you're right. It's, it's, it's that community thing. It is. I feel like at conventions, um, any kind of convention, whether it's board game, whether it's gaming, whether it's you know comics or anime, anything like that. Every time I go to a convention like that, it has its own kind of vibe to it, yep. and its um, own own feeling. And it's the people that really make that happen. Right. Yeah. I could just sit and be in a corner of a room by myself at a convention and be happy. I'd be like, oh, everyone's so excited mm. to be here, and everyone's yeah. just having such a good time. Exactly. Yep. I, I really enjoyed catching up with a, a bunch of people that I only really get to see at conventions and sort of saying sort of saying hi and bye for the, the last time the, this year. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, catch you the next one. And then catch working, you in the next year. Yep. Or well, catch you at the next convention, working out oh. which one that was going to be and whether we should go to LVO or <laughs> um, any of the other crazy conventions that are going on. Uh, in the first month, uh, first month or two of the year, but uh, um, there's definitely people. Alexander Helt Jr. says, "Will you both be at Adepticon?" Uh, I'm not sure about myself, but Dave, I, I will definitely be there. Um, Adepticon is my favorite convention of the year, uh, so yeah, without a doubt, I will be there. Um, I'm actually running some games. Ooh. At um, at Adepticon, uh, I haven't run any games for a long time, but I no am pressure. no pressure at all, not at all. Um, yep, so it's uh, I'm basically running a game, uh, but I'm running it twice. And Adept Adepticon's a big uh, miniatures convention. Um, loads, it, it's it's almost exclusively wargaming, tabletop wargaming. Uh, but I'm running a game that's very narrative driven. Uh, and tickets for it went on sale last Sunday uh, and sold out in, the tickets for, for my games uh, sold out in 10 minutes. Wow. I must say, I I'll let you know, it's only, really it was no only, pressure. It was only eight tickets per game, so 16 people. Over the course of that ten you minutes, you should have but. told us. You should have left it all exciting. Like, yeah, <laughs> people were scalping tickets. People were. That may still happen. <laughs> that may still happen. We've got another like 105 days before that show. <laughs> but um, what game is it? Um, I'm running uh, a game for a sort of a genre called Inquisitor 28, which is kind of like a very much story-driven uh, Warhammer 40,000 kind of gaming. Uh, we'll be using Necromunda rules. So Necromunda is another game set in, in that setting, uh, made by Games Workshop, and uh, it's set on a cemetery world. Okay. Where all the players have to bring along a war band that's led by a character that's been invited to this to a funeral of this uh, high-ranking 
imperial dignitary. So they come along and they know that something, something might happen. They're not exactly sure what will happen. All right, that's but, okay. But uh, they'll have to be doing a lot of interacting with the uh, with the other players and the other characters as uh, as the game kicks off. That seems very much your brand. What? Which like part? the whole the like idea death, that it's <laughs> cemeteries, <laughs> funerals, funerals, crazy. Uh, okay. Thanks. I meant the, the I guess. closer to the the warring aspect of it, but right. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 definitely much more. Um, it's well, it's, it's storytelling, but it's not uh, kind of adventuring party up against um, monsters kind of storytelling. It's a bit different. Uh, Joshua Michelle says, "Yay! I actually get to watch you live." Oh, cool! Excellent. Welcome. Welcome, Josh. So yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I know that uh, Rick has Adepticon on his um, Rick Rolls America tour dates. Excellent. I think he's going to be there on the Thursday, Friday, and then on the Saturday, Sunday, he's going to be heading north to Wisconsin for the um, for GaryCon, which is the same weekend. Because hmm. you know that he he wouldn't be able to miss GaryCon. <laughs> Man, this model is cool. Yeah, turn it, turn it around there. So, so far, I've just been messing around with some uh, contrast paints for the the face, the sort of the leather armor, the leather jerkin, and uh, some grays for the the pants and the sleeves, and you now just busting out a black for the the cloak. Somewhere in here, I'm going to squeeze in a little bit of red. Somewhere? Somewhere. I don't know where, but... See, mine's easy, because mine has uh, a bandana obscuring his face. It's not ah, right that's where it can go. Yeah, it can match cool. up. Actually, can I just borrow that for a sec? Which, you which know, one? No, you're, the my, one you're painting? Yeah. Yep. I'm just going to show. I just glanced over. That's all the hair. How'd you do that? How'd I do that? Yep. I did that with one coat of contrast and Nasdrag yellow. Cool. Yeah, that looks neat. Might darken it up a little bit though, so he's not as delightfully blonde on the battlefield. Right. I don't know. They they look like they some of them are brunette, some of them have dark hair. Some of I them, think it's a bit of a mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks cool. Very nice. Legless on the. I felt like with all the dark armor and stuff going on, it might give a nice little yeah. pop of some color. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, something similar, but my my guy looks a little bit a uh, little bit older, a bit of a veteran. So we can throw some gray hair in there. I think. I like that. You can keep my guy in line. Hmm? You can keep my guy in line. You got the oh, right. older yeah, yeah, war sure. vet, but, and you got you know he's obviously flashy with his hair and his bandana face. I yep, <laughs> bandana face. That's his war name. Is that that's, that's his war name? Like Taser Face. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Nice. Um. Oh, David has a good question. Is everything from Kaman basically in the same scale? Is it thirty-five millimeter? Is there basically a Kaman scale? Uh, I think the answer to that is yes. All right. Question mark. Um, yeah, I think they, they generally, um, for all the things that I've worked on, they're, they're basically the, that same sort of scale. I'd probably say thirty mil, maybe thirty-two, but uh, yeah, pretty much. I think we could put like the uh, when we painted some of those models from uh, Death May Die mm -hmm. uh, up against. These they'd be very similarly scaled. So, and yeah, then that's quite good. Sarah has a question too. Do you use metallics much? I love them in the color shift paints. I love metallics. I think yeah. metallics are fun, but I just like anything that sparkles. Right. <laughs> I I like um, I guess the ter the term I'm going to use may not be sort of perfectly right, but uh, natural metallics. I, I agree with that. So I like I like the silvers, um, silvers, golds, bronzes, coppers, uh, that kind of thing. I am not particularly a fan of uh, colored metallics like blues and reds and mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, so that's 
that's a really it's, that's just a preference thing for me. Um, I've seen some very cool stuff done with the color shift paints, though. Um, and I know that a lot of people like them, so who am I to get in their way? Just don't expect to see me using them too much. One day, I want to come up with my own palette for you. Yeah, that I have to use? That you have to use. <laughs> and you have to use every single color in it somehow. And it's, you, you're keeping a list, aren't you? You're keeping yeah. a list of all the colors. <laughs> it's going to be all I, the colors you hate most. <laughs> I don't hate any colors, but I'm not particularly fond of those. <laughs> but, Keep it uh, challenging. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Just quick, I'm going to have a quick look at the... Yeah, go for it. Look over there. Of course, I was like, I'm going to have a quick look at this and see what color the shields are. But the artwork on the front cover has no shield picture. This does, though. <gasps> it does? Oh, the card. Oh, cool. Damn. And then that guy Ooh, also has out. a shield on the card, um, but it's just plain metal. Right. It's not. Okay, so there we... No worries. There we go. So it's basically a, um, a silver shield. Bun? So he's a lieutenant. He is a lieutenant. Uh, or lieutenant, whichever one you want to go for. Again, we don't discriminate. Um, so around the so silver shield and a leather, leather strip sort of riveted on around the edge there, I guess to keep the um, edge of the shield. Yeah. Um, Safe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm making it up. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's a fantasy world. Yeah, we don't need to know their <laughs> reasoning. The reason I'm sure it. somewhere out there, there's someone probably in my friend's group that could... Could explain why. <laughs> that could be like, this is a thing from this and this and that. Yeah. But I don't have that knowledge, so... Sure. <laughs> it should be good. <laughs> Craig, all that glitters is gold. Uh, there we go. I can't help but, uh, it if I like shiny it definitely things. Definitely looks cool there. But uh, this reminds me. I'm gonna actually. Can I grab the? Do you have the other card? The other card? Yeah, yep. it's right here. Cool. Is that your card? This is my card. <laughs> this is what. This is the one I picked. Okay. So uh, Stormcrow Mercenaries. Just gonna have a quick look at them here. Uh, Stormcrow Mercenaries. Uh, it says. While one might question Stormcrow loyalty to their leaders, their employers, and even themselves, one can always count on their absolute devotion to coin. Once, once properly motivated, Stormcrow mercenaries are capable medium infantry, adept at holding a flank or performing flanking maneuvers themselves. Their professionalism guarantees a good working relationship with whomever their employer might be, but only as long as the coin lasts. Okay. So uh, they have um, their points cost of uh, five, they have the skill, uh, the, the ability uh, adaptive, which is when building your army, you reduce the cost of one attachment in this unit by one. So adding in the Stormcrow Lieutenant, who is one, it takes him down to zero points. Hmm. So you're pretty much always going to add him in. There's no reason not to. Uh, That's exciting. They're stat wise, they're movement five, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, they have. Four plus to hit, which isn't too bad um, for a combat unit. Uh, in A Song of Ice and Fire, um, units degrade. Mm -hmm. Their abilities degrade as you lose ranks. So they have, when they're full ranks, they're seven attacks, five attacks with two ranks, and three attacks with one rank. Uh, they have a save of four plus, which is pretty uh, sort of average. And their morale is seven plus, which isn't that great. I was gonna say that it's, sounds cool, but apparently this is not a up to ten level. That one's yeah, that one's kind of average. Um, with the morale, the lower it is, the better. Oh, so, okay. Um, you'll see some devote, very particularly devoted units that will have like a morale of two plus or three plus, that kind of thing. Uh, when building your army, so the adaptive is there, motivated by coin. If targeted uh, um, by one of the uh, NCUs, the non-combat units, mm -hmm. that is on the tactics board, when they go onto the money purse, this unit may replace its effect with, this unit takes a free action, which yeah. is pretty good. So that's, uh, that's quite nice. 
the uh, improved armaments from the lieutenant is, uh, while well, you control the money bags, this unit's attacks roll one die, uh, plus one die, and gain sundering. So defender um, has minus one to their saves, which is pretty cool. So overall, overall, they seem pretty useful. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think um, I think in that description where it talked about them being on the out on the flanks and that kind of thing, it was pr pretty um, good. Let's see. Joshua says, "Have you tried to combine contrast colors?" Uh, I have, actually. How yeah. How did that work for you? Uh, it worked. Uh, it worked just fine. Well, I combined. Um, I actually combined the wildwood, which is a very dark, sort of almost black brown, mm -hmm. and uh, gorgrunter fur, which is no, that's not it. It's over here somewhere. Uh, but it's more of a um, sort of orangey brown. Uh, so I mixed those two together and the um, mixed it together with some of the contrast medium mm -hmm. uh, to use as a wash over some terrain. I painted a whole bunch of terrain over the last month. And yeah, I just mixed those together to use, uh, kind of to, to darken it down, give it a, like more of a slightly rusted but also oily grimy kind of feel and uh yeah it worked really well i've definitely uh i've i've layered i haven't tried mixing anything right i think the that that's for the contrast paints because of the their intensity i guess mm -hmm. uh, might be the way to describe it but the way that um Layering works very differently to using washes. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's that's as much an exploration in itself, sort of as, as mixing the colors. You can spend a lot of time working out what's going to work best for you by doing it that way. <laughs> Combine contrast colors. What? Wouldn't you just be making mud? No, you can you can mix. I mean, you can paint over top of paint while it's still wet. I think yep. you just have to have a light hand and have a lot of precision. You yeah. kind of have to know what you're doing and have practiced in order to really get what you want out of it. Yep, agreed. One of the things that uh, when I was doing the, well, this, uh, the washing over the terrain, mm -hmm. um, I'd started with a with a spray of a like a rust oleum paint, mm -hmm. like a um, flat red, which is more of a, like a rusty color, uh, and then hit it with uh, some, a spray of lead belcher, which is a GW silver spray, and then came along and hit it with the uh, with this wash mixture, and I was a little bit worried um, that you know, when I started, I, I mean when I started doing that that mix and putting it on, I was really happy with the results. But I was a little bit worried that it would take me a lot of paint uh, yeah, to do I it all. Yeah, I can see that. So, yeah, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to buy like two or three more pots of each of these. But thankfully, that wasn't the case. And it only it was only about like a third of a pot of each That's in really the end. really good. So I just mixed it up as I, as I was going, as I needed it. So I'd sit down in the evening to work on another two pieces. It was mix it up, paint it on, mix some more up, paint it on. So it was really nice to get so much out of, uh, out of it. But uh, I'll post some pictures of that in, you know, in the group uh, over the next couple of days. But yeah. Oh yeah, cool. How right you are. We haven't done that for a couple of weeks. Yeah, we haven't looked at minis in a while. Let's see. What do we got? Who do we have? Oh, cool. Ooh. I like That's that. That's a smooth paint job on the skin. Yeah. Yeah. It does look really nice, doesn't it? I love the eye. <laughs> that eye is fantastic. Yeah. Very nice job there, Amber. Uh, that looks cool. Where's that mini from? I wonder. Mm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Leona says, too late. Too late. Yeah. Uh, Never to be seen again. Sorry. So this week... I yep. had someone helping me gather oh, okay. the pictures. So they didn't, oh, they didn't so we gather everything. We don't have the info. We can, we can go back and check on the 
on the page though. But yeah, look look great there, uh, there Amber. Very nice. Oh, and Deep Madness from Art. Yeah, these look uh, these look very cool. They're a crazy. They look like spiders. spiders. I don't know how I feel about that. Spiders, aliens, uh, sort of gene seals from 40k. There's a there's a whole mix of crazy things going on with those models. But I like the colors. Yeah, I think the colors look brilliant, and I, th I think. It, He's gone in there with, uh, like, with some uh, glue, yeah. like a uhu glue kind of stuff. Is and that how he got the webbing? Those, that webbing, yeah. Okay. That looks really yeah. cool. I would not, you know, what glue makes sense for webbing though. Now yeah. that I'm thinking about it, there's a, a particular glue that's available in um, Europe called uhu. Uh, I mean, I think <laughs> he, I think here might have like uhu glue sticks, yeah. but they have um, it's a glue that's in a tube um, that's great for doing this, but for some reason it's not available in the US. But hmm. uh, no, it looks great, Art. Very nice. Oh, Carl's been working on a dragon. That's a fun color scheme. Yeah. That's a fun model. That's an interesting setup for a dragon. Yep. It kind of almost looks rodent-y. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Like a like a cartoon rodent, yeah. kind of standing up and going. Rawr! But uh, no, looking very cool. It's a, it's kind of a weird thing though. So the greens mm -hmm. that are on it. Initially, I thought there was a green light to the side that was yeah, shining yeah, on, so it was a lighting effect. But painting. it's uh, yeah, it's all the painting. That looks very cool, Carl. Very nice. I like it. Oh, cursed dice has been painting up some dewbacks. Comb the desert. Have you seen The Mandalorian yet? I have not seen The Mandalorian. Neither yet. have I, and it makes me sad. <laughs> I'm I'm just fine with it. I figure that uh, it'll all be out. And see, at the moment, I I've seen not, the only things I've seen are like Baby, ba Yoda. Baby Yoda, and there's a couple of other things that have been mentioned, but I got no idea what the story is. I know. I can still be able to drop back in January first when we get. Uh, Disney Plus and start to watch it. But these uh, these look very cool. I think a uh, very nice job. The uh, It's really cool to see them in that um, sort of that, that orange, that almost rusty orange yeah. kind of color. They look great. Very nice work, Cursed Ice. Lovely. Oh, Doc's, Doc's sword miniatures. I love this so much. I did not know that there was a many that could be a hedgehogling. Um, it is amazing, though. I isn't love it? everything about this many. <laughs> it's so, it's so adorable. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, there we go. Uh, but uh, yeah, this as soon as I saw this, it was like this is fantastic. The um, the funny thing as well is painting the shambling mound mm -hmm. um, at PAX last week. The, has some, it has some toadstools on it, and so I painted them uh, red and little dots of like bone color and then put a wash over them, and they came out looking exactly like that, like on that toadstool. I love so it was that like, so when much. I saw that, it was like, oh, my heart leapt. <laughs> but no, fantastic. Actually, sorry, <laughs> sorry, can we go back just for one second? <laughs> We're enamored. <laughs> the, the one thing that I also thought was, Gretchen's gonna love this. It's such. It's so whimsical. It is. It's the whimsy. It is the whimsy. Yep. It's the fact that it's leaping off the toadstool with the knife in its hand, and it has the plant. Everything. It's got about, the leaf ready to yeah, catch the wind. Just and just fly away. Yep. <laughs> and stab you, like stab you and fly away. And fly away. I love it yep. too much. <laughs> great. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Dave Shrumpf. Oh, well, let's check that out. That is. Uh, that is very cool. Very nice. I wonder where that mini's from. But uh, yeah, everything looks great. I love the sword, and uh, I love the color combination. It's kept everything um, nice and close. The the blue, blue purple of mm -hmm. the robes, and that red sash, and then the the blue of the hair. Yeah. It balanced nicely all on that one side of the color wheel with the yellow on the other. Um, it's done a great job there, and because that blue, the blue robes are very desaturated; they're almost gray. Um, that allows that 
um, head work really well. I treat really well. every blue that is in that desaturated, almost gray color area as a neutral. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Every time. That's fair. That's fair. But no, it looks great, Dave. Nice work. Oh, Don Slater has been doing some more Machine Krieger. So this is looking, uh, looking very nice. Is it? Hmm. Right. It does yeah. Look very Bioshocky. Yeah, the Machine and Krieger stuff that does have the the suits do have that kind of kind of feel. But uh, yeah, I love the the weathering on this one. It's really nice. And also the do you think that where the uh, the school goal is is holding that um, RPG. <laughs> Ready to take something out, just just calmly and quietly. But uh, no, nice work, Don. Looks great. Draco's pa tabletop painting. That's a cool, uh, cool goblin. Looking uh, oh, very neat there. I like there. the facial expression on the goblin. Yeah. Yep. Those I, those glasses. And just like I think that exaggerates it. It gives it that really yeah. wide-eyed kind of <laughs> maniacal feel. But uh, yeah, that looks uh, that looks really cool. What's the noise that goblin makes? Uh, th this particular one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's the one my goblins make. Yours make make a different sound. What about yours, the owner? What sound do they make? Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> They're always excited. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Fabrice uh, is working on a uh, new character there. Um, it's kind of funny because I, when I, was, I looked at this the other day and the first shot that Fabrice put up was of the back of mm -hmm. the model. Well, at least that was the, the main shot that came up. And uh, I got to tell you, I, I love the, the back of the model a little bit more than the front. I mean, the front, the front looks great. Because all the fabric? There's there's a lot yeah there's a lot of mixed draping. mixed uh, fabrics and um, and textures there's like a, there's a backpack there's additional stuff stuck to the backpack and uh, that kind of thing so yeah it was like oh I really like this I like the front too but I love the back I don't, sometimes <laughs> I feel like when you're painting sometimes you get really lucky and you paint a specific part of something so well and then comparative to the rest of it you're just like man. Man, it's something in, inconsequential, like the back of a mini or something. You're right. just like, this is art. <laughs> I like to think, yeah, it's true. When you, when you can do that, it's, it's, it is very pleasing. But uh, I wouldn't say that the back of the mini is inconsequential. Not inconsequential. Yeah, well, like things you wouldn't expect, I guess. Right, yeah. When you're, when you're playing war games, though, you spend a lot of time pushing a mini's like, face forward away from you kind of thing. <laughs> so you, uh, you get to see their back all the time. So you want to make sure that they look good for you, too. It's all right, important. all right. It's important. Uh, but yeah, nice work for Brees. Looks great. Uh, Jeff Purcell. Oh, that's cool. I like that. The, um, Ooh, the stripes those are on some that. good stripes. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, the stripes on that top look very cool. Where's this model from? It looks like the girl from How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, you're it right. It does look like the girl from How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. I'm not sure, but it, it might be. It, it might be something connected, or something inspired by that at least. It's from a Reaper box. Right. But yeah, no, Jeff, that looks uh, looks very cool. I like it. I think that done a great job there. Oh, this is crazy beast from Jason. Um, <laughs> yeah. Are those skulls? Those the are top? skulls. They're all skulls. And, and on the legs. And on the legs, they're skulls too? It's a creature made of skulls and other bones. That's the Ribs best kind of creature, obviously. Vertebrae. I, I, I must admit, I like my creatures to just, just have one skull. <laughs> that way, On the inside? <laughs> inside, generally inside <laughs> the body. Yeah, in, like covered by like. You have to you have to verify on the inside versus on the outside. Skin and fur or muscle, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, generally one on the inside. Uh, but. Uh, because that way you know where you know where to hit. All right, yeah. all right. When you get your uh, your big axe out, but uh, this one's like you could just smash one of those skulls, and it's like, I got him. Oh nope. What, uh, what about this skull hat? that mattered was like the foot skull? See that would be what frightening. If you, like crushed all the other skulls, and you're like, where where is it? And it's 
It's in the foot. It's yeah. in the foot. Right. I don't know. But no, it looks great. It's great, Jason. Ah, chat says <laughs> it's a bone golem. It's a bone golem. That makes sense. Yeah. It all makes sense now. But no, very cool. Okay, Ooh. Jason's uh, starting some work here. I think this is another... I wonder where this one's from. This might be a... It's a Starfinder mini? I don't know. I'm just wondering because the... Um, and the basing approach kind of is a is a whiz kids kind of feel, mm -hmm. but it's very definitely a um, oh maybe not maybe not but it's it has a very strong uh, sci-fi feel. Uh, but uh, yeah, those uh, that the silver work that you've done so far on that Jason is looking very cool. Nice one. Jason as well. Uh, Jason, another dragon. Check out this one. The way he did the scales looks like beetle wings. Yeah. Yep. That iridescent it does. kind of. Has that sort of feel. Yes. I've got to ask a question here, and Sarah, I mean, tell me, but uh, that that iridescence. I was wondering if he painted that with uh, like a metallic, um, oh. metallic green. Uh, that is a good question. I'm See, sure. and that I'll would be Jason. a time where metallics in other colors, one, accidentally end up natural, and two, are better. be perfectly acceptable. <laughs> acceptable. But no, uh, it looks great, Jason. Very nice work. I think, um, yeah, the, the pop that you're getting on those scales is definitely from that contrast. Coming from that black to that, mm -hmm. oh, that very bright, vibrant green. But yeah, looking good. Looking good. Oh, and another Jason. That's three Jasons in a row. Talk about Dave being a popular name. Obviously, it doesn't count if it's Jason. <laughs> anyway. Each so, Jason is unique. Yeah, this is true. Jason's been working on this. Uh, I'm not sure. Is this a... I see the mace there, and it, maces all in d and always make me think clerics. Uh-huh. I think so. Yeah, so it might be a, a drow cleric. Ready to uh, drink from the skulls of her enemies? I, I think that would sum it up pretty well there. Yeah. Very nice. I think it's cool. I, li I like it. I think um, the purple, uh, it's just got just the right amount of saturation on the, the purple on the clothing, just the right amount of saturation to, um, to work against that skin tone. It's uh, looking great. Very nice, Jason. Good work. Cool. That's it for now. That was fun. That was. It was nice to get back to that. Definitely cool. I am going to need... Yeah! <laughs> I'm going to need to steal a metallic from you, though. Oh, sure. Because okay. I need something to paint this sword. Radio. And this I armor. Have a new pot of gunmetal gray. Ooh. There you go. May want to give it a bit more of a shake, but... Yeah. I ran out of my usual uh, silver and popped down to my local store to pick up some more. Uh, it's definitely good. But uh, I think I might, I'm going to mention something else as well. Over here that, uh, that I picked up, something I picked up at PAX. Oh, what did you pick up at PAX? I picked up from our friends, it's uh, Armor Class 10. Mm -hmm. I picked up the first. Uh, First of my new uh, t-shirts. Oh. Uh -huh. Some a little bit of uh, t-shirt merch. So, just uh, just quickly, if you get back to the wide cam. Gotta give your oh. best voguing. Vogue. Dude. Vogue. Yeah. Vo model. Oh, sorry. Uh, model. <laughs> That's. I don't know what that is. But anyway, uh, so yes, so it's one of the first t-shirts. Make your painting a habit, not a chore. Um, that's one of my big pieces of advice. Uh, about how to get your projects completed more often. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think sometime later this week, and I say later this week, I must mean tomorrow, right? Maybe Saturday. Uh, you maybe, got two days. Maybe early next week. Um, uh, Jake and the guys at uh, Armor Class 10 will have that up on their website. Which will be uh, very cool. Just in time for Christmas. Mm. <laughs> I feel so terrible. I'm a terrible shill. But... Uh, it's okay. We keep you around. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, it was it was very cool to spend a bit of time hanging out with them and uh, 
and picking up some cool, cool new t-shirts. Definitely good. Do you have more? I do. There are two more. Two more t-shirts in the range. And I'll wear them in January. <laughs> because I won't be here next week. Aww. Or the week after. So... You mean I have to close out the new the this year? I was about to say to close out the new year. I have to close out the year without you. Yeah, yep. I have faith. I have every faith you can do it. Someone says stocking stuffers. Stocking stuffers. Ooh, yeah, that's exactly. a good idea. Exactly, great new stocking stuffers. But uh, yep, good idea, Walt. Okay, I think I'm going to put. I'm actually going to repaint repaint his pants. Repaint his pants. I'm going to paint his gray pants red. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Hmm? Nothing. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so let's pop some noise out there. And then I'll come back and uh, do some work on his silver. But, uh, yeah. So what games did you play at PAX? Tell me about that. Um, I played... Uh, what? Are You a Robot? I did play Are You a Robot. Um, I played Are You a Robot, which was really fun during my interviews, uh, which is kind of like Werewolf in the idea that you're trying to figure out who is the, the enemy. Okay. But um, it's a much smaller, more condensed kind of version of it where you are trying to figure out who in your group is the robot. Okay. So if it's a two, uh, if it's a three player game, we would all get cards, shuffle them up, and it would be um, trying to convince everyone that you're human. Right. Right. And then at the end, you all decide, and if the robot, you have to shake hands, and if the robot um, is one of the people whose hands you shake, yeah. then they kill you. Okay. And then, of course, the humans lose. Right. But if you can figure it out and you can get rid of the robot... And nobody shakes the robot's hand. Yeah, and then you high-five your human friends. Ah, and then the humans win. Okay. But we played an even more condensed version where it's just two people. Oh, wow. And so one of us... Yep, so you still have three cards. So you could end up um, having one robot, one pe person, or you could end up having two people. Okay. Um, and you have to figure it out. Um, and the way you do that is by just like pleading your case. Okay. So like, why, why would I think you are human, Dave? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'd be the worst at this game. <laughs> so I was like, I'm bad at math. Obviously, I'm a human. I'm not a robot. See, I'm, I'm good at math. You, you don't even have the cards. Yeah, you're a robot. I'm good at math, I lack empathy and whimsy. <sighs> Gonna lose this game every time, Dave. <laughs> I do enjoy coffee in the morning. Does that count? Maybe you're a robot that runs on coffee. <laughs> Caffeine powered robot? Caffeine powered robot. Sure, that could be. That That's could work the name out. of my punk band. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Sarah says next week you should paint Christmas type minis. So I actually had an idea that I don't know if we're gonna do it on the show, but I definitely feel like I wanna see it in the chat. I was at the dollar store. Right. And they have Christmas, like for the Christmas towns, yep. they have minis for a dollar. Right. <laughs> and they're scary <laughs> and awful. Are they, are they just repainted Halloween I minis? Have, minis I, I don't know what <laughs> went into the creation of these, but they're a dollar and I wanna see what people in the chat can turn them into. Right, okay. Like, I want to see some repaints. I want to see some green stuff. I want to I want to see what what they can become. Can yeah, chat, do you think we should do repaint of Christmas Town minis and figure out uh, figure out exactly how far we can bring them back into the realm of minis and <laughs> right. <laughs> like cool looking things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leona says if the chat says yes, cool. then we'll have a Christmas Town Minis painting minis episode where we repaint all of them. Yep. 
Uh, oh, sorry, Dave Moffat said dirty synths. They could be anyone. <laughs> Learned about those out in the Boston wastelands. I think that's a Fallout reference, right? <laughs> uh, and well, Bloodsaw says uh, War in Christmas Village has minis. Actually, if you go back to about this time last year, you'll see yep. us painting some. They were fun. Definitely enjoyed those. But yeah, I think that would be a cool idea <laughs> if we did that. Hey, Stuart. You know, I thought of you, Stuart, whenever I said uh, coffee-powered robot. Coffee-powered robot. Yeah. And here you are in the chat. It's like... <laughs> it's like you summoned him. It's like magic. I did. Yeah. <laughs> See, I I also enjoy avocado on I toast. I do too, though. <laughs> I, mm, I don't think that would work. <laughs> yeah, there's a. It was a fun little game. Yeah, that's cool. What was it called? Uh, it was. Wasn't it just? Yeah, are you a robot? Are you a robot? Like that's simple by I, Looney Labs. I like uh, I like games that are. Like does what the, does what it says on the tin. Yes. <laughs> wonder what I wonder what this is about. <laughs> That's cool. I got to uh, meet the creator of a game that my daughters uh, have loved quite a bit for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, a game called Tenzi. Okay. Which is a just a silly um, but highly amusing um, dice rolling game. Is that hmm. No, it's not Looney Labs. I think it's uh, I think it's Karma Games, but with a C. Um, but yeah, so it was very cool to sit there, and I walked up and I said, "My daughters love this game," and uh, explained the extent to which they loved it. And he was like, "Oh, fantastic! Well, you need to take this with you." And it was like a, a, a deck of like seventy-seven cards oh, I to love give you. That. A, like, and each card was a different way to play the game. The game's very simple. It's you have ten dice, you roll, or you pick a number between one and six, and you roll until you, all of the dice come up that number, and the person who okay. finishes rolling first wins, kind of thing. And then there are variants on it, um, where you might randomly determine what the number is, or you have two numbers that you have to get. And you have to get like five of one number and five of another, um, or you have to stack them. As you as you roll them, um, but uh, yeah, it was pretty uh, pretty neat, and yeah. So when I brought that home and gave that to uh, gave the the extra sort of cards to them, they grabbed out the Tenzi dice and started rolling, and then they came up with three of their own, <laughs> which is great because the the deck also gave you like three blank cards to write your own. That's fun. That's dangerous, but that's fun. Yep. And then there were a couple of other games that they had there that I picked up for them as well. So we'll take those with us to Australia and they can, we can play those on Christmas Day. Should be a lot of fun. Yes. There was so much going on. I'm there sure. was so much going on at PAX. I, I really did have a good time though. Yep. I, had, I actually had a similar thing happen except since I don't have children, it was someone right. asking about... It was, not, it was not so much games that your kids enjoyed, was, but games a, that you enjoyed. Uh, no, it was a game that my boyfriend would enjoy. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but I had... So there was a game called Babbage and Lace, which is very math-oriented. Okay. And the mechanics yep. are really... Oh, Love, Lace, and Babbage. Sorry. Love, Lace, and Babbage. Swapped them. Um, but... Yours is more the Harlequin novel. <laughs> but, you know, that. <laughs> the Holocaust novel story I of the inter invention of the computer, oh my right? Gosh. So my, <laughs> with this game, every time I interact with this game, something goes horribly wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the game itself is like about coding and math and the mechanics are really solid and it's awesome. I just happen to not have a lick of natural mathematic ability. Oh, okay. Right here. Um, my boyfriend does, though. He's very good at it. That's how his brain works. And so I played this game with the creators of it and was completely lost. Right. And just, we were making fun of me for, for it felt like decades. Right. 
<laughs> um, but they came over uh, at PAX and they're like, so remember this game? And suddenly I was like, oh, yes. Um, are you going to make me play it again? I thought we realized I suck at it. <laughs> um, but they gifted um, a copy for my boyfriend. Oh, cool. Um, who can truly, you know, appreciate the the fun of it. Right. Um, That's great. So that was, it was very nice, very nice of them. Yeah. Cool. And who's that one by? Uh, Genius Games. Cool. Yeah, so if you happen to be someone who's really good at math or appreciate competitive math, Competitive math. Um, that game is also for you. If you're like me and you suddenly have flashbacks to like the minute math worksheets in elementary school. Then maybe it's not. Um, then I don't know. Maybe if it, it could still be your drive. Uh, I won't judge. Right. But. Nice. Also, say hello to Manny on YouTube. Hey, Manny on YouTube. Hey, Manny on YouTube. Hmm? West Texas. West Texas oil fields. There we go. Cool. I think, um... Did you say hi to the op? Pardon? The op? Did you find the op? Yeah, I did find the op and said hi to Ross. Uh, they were showing off um, the uh, Talisman uh, Disney... Is it Kingdom Hearts? Yes. Yes. Kind of mashup. So yeah, he was uh, showing showing that off and uh, that sort of thing. It was very cool. But yeah, it was great too. Ed, Ross is one of the guys that you see at every show. It's always nice to catch up with him and see how things are going. Ross does a... Oh, you spoke to Ross on uh, did. Sunday, didn't you? Cool. Excellent. Did you guys talk about swords as well? No. <laughs> no? Ross is big in the um, SCA. Oh, see, I, I didn't know. If I would have known, I would have been like, swords! Swords! We're hijacking this... Uh, <laughs> this whole conversation is now about swords! That's why they didn't let me know, <laughs> Right, okay, yep. They would have... Yep, yep, for sure. There's a great overlap in the community of people who like to play games that let them be swords people and people who actually yep. end up being swords people. people. <laughs> yep. They definitely are. But no, that's cool. That's good. So, how many how many interviews did you do over the course of the weekend? Um, not as many as uh, with open house. Yeah, not as many as with open house. We had two. Yeah, we had two people. Tommy helped me out, right, so that I could actually enjoy some of the convention. Cool. And talk to people. Um, yeah, I think it was just 12. It was really relaxed. It was very nice. Good. Um, and I think it helped the interviews actually flow better, too, because I'm, I'm not exhausted. I'm <laughs> and also, you're not there sort of keeping an eye on the clock. and like, oh, uh, Yeah, okay, I'm going to ask mean, one more question, and then you're out. <laughs> Next person's coming in. I never yep. do that, ever. Ish. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I don't do it either, which is why I'm not allowed to do interviews anymore. That's why. Do they just go on forever? They do. They do. As long as I have like interest or well, questions that I find interesting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's that's very cool. I think. Um, and so are they going to be going going up over the next? They'll be. Week uh, or so? Yeah, they'll be popping up. They're live now. Oh, okay, great. But Right. Cool. Uh, that's excellent. How's your guy coming along? He's coming along. Yeah? Yeah. He's oh, he's looking good. Very cool. Playing around with lighting. Yeah. Don't know how that'll work. But you don't know until you try. This is true. I think I'm going to mess around a little bit with... Uh, his cloak, and rather than doing, um, so I've got a black cloak there at the moment, rather than doing straight up um, gray, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with a little bit of a, a green gray. I like that. Just uh, to make something different. So for the, um, when I say green gray, it starts with a black. Uh, let's put some black there and use some of this um, 
Sons of Horus Green from Citadel. So it's like a, it's an off green, at the, sort of the blue end mm -hmm. in the spectrum, kind of desaturated. So this is my sort of experiment for the for the show. The experiment for the show. Yeah, because I haven't I haven't used it in this um, in this way before. So. I'm mad, man. He's crazy. No, um, I think it should be fun. But I want to go for that sort of that greenish tinge because of the bread that's on here. Again, getting that that balance. But uh, Christmas colors. Christmas colors. Oh. Well, I, I will also admit that once I started painting the fur around the the trim. There's tunic there, right next to the red. It was like, I should make him Santa Claus. Storm Crow Santa. Storm Crow Santa. You got bandana yeah. face and Storm Crow Santa. Yep. Speaking of war on Christmas. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, actually I can just leave his hair white, can I? Yeah. It'll be fine. I think, uh, Lots of great folds in this cloak that'll uh, really give me some good opportunities for contrast. There. Very cool. That. Nice. While I'm messing around with that, I'm gonna, can I grab your guy? Yes, you I want to show him under the, the close cam here. Quite a few colors going on there. I don't know how much the camera's going to pick up. Yeah, it's probably going to be better on the, um, on the spinner, but actually, yeah, if that's cool, yep. we'll switch to the spinner. Just yoink these guys out of the way. Yep. There we go. Got some, some highlights, some shading. I went a little bit more drastic with that. Uh, with the light shading. Source, the, yeah. Yep. We'll see how that pops out. I think it's looking uh, looking good. I'm liking the um, the variety of browns that you've got going on. It's kind of tough when you you've got a, an army that's the brown <laughs> that's neutrals. I mean they're in the, they're yeah. the neutral faction, but they're also there. So the I'll color scheme is very some highlights and pick images. some uh, pick some details apart. Yeah, he's looking very cool. See how that works. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> The hair is just a coat of the uh, the uh, contrast paint. Is it Nasdaq? The, the Nasdaq yellow, yeah. Yep. Because it's it's blonde without being like blonde. Yeah, it's not like orange blonde or that kind of thing. But no, I like it. Looking very cool. I'm gonna get a little bit more of this guy. Work done. But uh, it has been, it's been more than two weeks since we painted together. It has. How was your uh, Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was very good. Yeah? That's it? Yeah, that's it. You've forgotten the rest of it? Yep. You just have that, that lasting impression? Time has passed. <laughs> I ate I delicious just, food. <laughs> I ate delicious food and I was warm inside. <laughs> cool. That's neat. I think um, at... At PAX last week, I told um, you, Gretchen, and mm -hmm. Leona about a game that I played at uh, Thanksgiving mm -hmm. that my um, my sister-in-law came up with, which was just really super simple. She had 10 index cards with, with words on them, or like animal, or bird, mm -hmm. or plant, or weather, that kind of thing. And when they were flipped over, we had to think of a song title or song lyric that um, that was connected to it. So if it was animal, we need to come up with something that had an animal in it. So it could be like Eye of the Tiger. Okay. Um, if it was a bird, like for the bird, I came up with um, Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. And uh, for plant, I also came up with Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. It was Your handy creative to, abilities. There were a couple of, couple of twofers in there. A Astound me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a it was a, a fun um, fun game 
to play. Uh, we we won things that she'd bought from the uh, the dollar section of Target. So uh, I think I ended up with a like a travel pack of ibuprofen. I love this game so much more now that I know about the prizes. <laughs> yeah, the prizes were fantastic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, so the my daughters were playing as well, and uh, my eight-year-old daughter Lucy. Um, Didn't you say she absolutely like adored it? Like, she she was... loved the game. I mean, she didn't know she didn't have any answers at all. Um, I mean, she knows she remembers song lyrics, but she couldn't think of any to yeah, yeah. insert into the competition. So we were feeding her lines along the way. Um, but she loved it so much that for her birthday, her birthday party, she went through and she prepared the same thing. She got some index cards and wrote out the words and um, got it all ready. And I was a little bit worried, I, I will admit, because as an eight-year-old, she hadn't had a particularly good run of it during the game. Aww. She just enjoyed it. So that, but I then, feel like when you're with other eight-year-olds, though, yeah, she, they played it. They they got about two uh, through about two rounds, and the rest of the, the, the a bunch of them were like, ah, we don't like this game. They weren't as excited about it as her. That was a bit of a bit of a I shame think. for her, but but she uh, she shook it off pretty quickly. It was fine. But uh, when I was driving them to school this morning, uh, the song by Pink Floyd came on, called Terminal Frost. Uh huh. And she goes, Daddy. Could we have used this for the weather card in that game, in Aunt Carrie's game? And I was like, yep, totally could have. <laughs> She's still thinking about it. It's still stuck, stuck in her head there, That's which is fantastic. pretty amazing. So I really hope they're going to enjoy these, uh, the games they get for Christmas. It should be fun. I was just the cool aunt for Christmas, and I got my niece. Uh, she wanted Luigi's Mansion. For her switch, she informed me. That okay, she that's, a, that's a game. That's a game. Okay, radio. <laughs> I was wondering if it was a little bit like uh, like Barbie's mansion, <laughs> except Luigi. But with Luigi, <laughs> and at the top of the mansion, there's a <laughs> a monkey a, yeah, throwing barrels. Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But anyway, so keep going. So game yeah, for the switch. Uh, she she wanted. A game, I thought she was going to want Pokemon because she had been into Pokemon. And I was going to get her Pokemon Sword or Shield. Um, okay. Hadn't quite figured out which one. So I was trying to be stealthy, right? And yep. ask her uh, leading questions to figure out if she'd want Sword or Shield. And she goes, no, no. The only game I want is Luigi's Mansion. Right. No, that's what I got. <laughs> you kind of got. <laughs> I was like, all right. Railroaded you into. Here's what you're buying. It's the only <laughs> game I want, and uh, that's the game she got. That's the. That's what she wanted. That's what I got for her. Um, she doesn't know it, um, but that's. I'm gonna wrap it in like three different, uh, different boxes. Right. Because she's smart enough to where if I just have it in a box, she'd be like, that's game shaped. <laughs> right. But, yeah. Excellent. I, I'm, I'm attempting to be the cool aunt. We'll see. We'll see just how, how much that works. Right. That's cool. There we go. <laughs> How's that looking? Oh, I think it looks good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. That's awesome. So I'll have to pop him on the... Santa. Hmm? Santa. Santa? Yeah. Yeah, no work on that now. <laughs> it's gonna shade it a little bit, right? Oh, you, you mean I have to put like I have to make him blonde or brown, a brown head or that sort of thing? Yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna look too much like Santa. Yeah. Right here. That's not necessarily a bad thing, right? No. Okay. I'm gonna close up my paint. Someone said, "Hope she's not watching." Justin. <laughs> <laughs> she's not. She doesn't watch. Uh, she's in school. I don't think she actually realizes anything that I do at all outside of like, yeah. <laughs> like she vaguely knows that I do sword to fighty things and she's aware. <laughs> 
but I don't think it actually like has sunk in at all or any of my hobbies really exist outside of being her aunt. I think most kids don't care. Especially <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's just like, okay. There's so much other information to sort of stick in there. I mean, whether they know or not, you're still going to do what you do, right? Yeah. So, yeah, this, uh, putting in this sort of paler blonde hair is giving me a, a little bit more of a Jamie Lannister feel. Like scruffy, scruffy mm -hmm. Jamie Lannister. Possibly. I mean, this the shield might just be strapped to his arm. But I mean, this guy still has his right hand, so I guess yeah, it's not him. But I think I'm really happy with it. That sculpt on his face is just amazing. It is really good sculpt. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Roughly got his hair in. Do some highlights. I'll just add a, little, a few more highlights to the to the silver. And he'll be done. Will I have time to finish the second guy, do you think? Hmm. I won't. No. <laughs> <laughs> But you might, you might. I'm not Actually, sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I said I, I'm really fond of how the uh, the leather quilting turned out. It has a nice little. It looks like worn leather, the different colors in it. Right. So that's nice. Cool. Oh. I just realized the uh, I do the back of his his shield and the straps holding it to his arms. And then I can highlight the silver. There we go. I think we might actually be ready for the second batch of uh, viewer minis. Okay. Ooh. I was just going to say that. Okay, what do we got? About to bring up the minis. So, all of the, um, something I didn't mention last time around is that all of the minis that we show on the show. Uh, from the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, which recently passed 1,500 members. Did it? Yeah. Excellent. Woohoo! And by recently, I mean like in the last week. <laughs> when none of us were here to celebrate. Yep. Right before PAX, exactly. So, I think we're gonna we'll probably run a competition for it in the in the new year. Sounds good. Yes. I like that. That would be good. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, just uh, a quick search for painting happy little minis and uh, click join group and we'll let you in. These are, oh, cool. Josh Edwards has painted up some, um, some high elves. Uh, he's painted them up for um, Warhammer Age of Sigma, I think. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're made by my games workshop. It's funny, you might get that vibe, but uh, yeah, these are looking good. Normally, the the high elf models are you usually see them in very bright, um, uh, light colors like whites and bright blues and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So this um, the deeper red here is a great sort of contrast to what you would usually see with them. It's looking really nice. It's a little bit more of an evil spiky feel. It does yeah, definitely, definitely cool. have a. Those are villain colors. They are villain colors, without a doubt. Like, like Pardon? Like Nazgul from uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. Yep. I have that feel for sure. But they look great, Josh. Nice, nice work. Josh, again? Wait, I know who's going to be after this. Mini Painting Studio. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> Josh uh, from Michelle. Hopefully you're still in the, uh, still in the chat, Josh. But uh, yeah, looking very cool. This um, that looks good. Yeah, I love it. 
you know, the, the bright uh, saturated uh, blues that you've got going on there and the swords and the, the loincloth and working well against that desaturated uh, green, the greens and bones. But yeah, looking nice. I wonder where that model's from. I love that Anybody know? Dark color in the yeah, the cracks of the skin, mm -hmm. like between the between the scales. Yeah, looks definitely uh, very cool. I think it brings out her reptilian. Yep. Everything looks. Yeah, yep. That does have that feel. Looks great. Very nice. Mariano. Oh, painting up some Skaven. Um, I'm just going to assassins and. This game have a very, uh, well, they, particularly these guys, I think this is Clan Eshen, who are kind of like the assassins. <laughs> so they have a very uh, ninja kind of feel, which is why I think, you know, why Mariano has gone for the, uh, that back banner. A little bit of the uh, Japanese influence. But it looks cool. Very nice. Very good. Oh, Mark Maxwell. Painting up the Man of Steel. That's cool. <laughs> hmm? Oh, nice, <laughs> nice holder, the McCormick. Local here, Baltimore. They're just uh, five minutes up the road. You can smell them processing. It's so delicious every time. Every time? I wouldn't say every time. <laughs> oh, but isn't that the place that like they make cinnamon and stuff? Oh yeah, sometimes it smells like donuts. Outside. Yeah. I'm not here for those not times, so much. obviously. <laughs> let's go back to, oh. sorry, let's go back to Mark's uh, Superman there. We were talking about McCormick for too much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm just wondering if this, this is a repaint of, um, of a mini, but uh, I'm trying to recognize the base. But it looks really cool. I, I like the, um, it's got a very young Superman kind of. It does have feel. a very young Superman. Okay. I think it's because the, the hair. Yeah, I was going to say the um, hair. Yep. You see, with it, when Superman's like in his 40s, suddenly he's like much more put together. Right, yep. It's Whereas good. this mini has, uh, his hair is more whooshy. Right, he's more of a Smallville. More of, a little of bit a, more of a Smallville, yeah. Kind of thing. Angsty. 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 <laughs> yeah, not, not quite um, Spider-Man 3 angsty, but uh, <laughs> put on its way. But no, it looks great, Mark. Oh. Very nice. Michael Gonzalez, oh. This thing is creepy. Creepy. I like the whatever that is that he's like surfing on. I think it's the, again. It's, it's I think it's bones and energy. Well, the energy waves are cool. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Wipe out. But yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's looking very cool. I agree. I like the uh, those sort of energy streams that are running through the the skeletons, or the the tumble of bones. But uh, yeah, that's a great necromancer. Very cool. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh. Michael Bruce, Animal Dragon Games. I have been enjoying Michael's uh, name placement, where he stickers the photos. Uh huh. But uh, but that beholder is something fierce. That's insane. Yeah, that's uh, that's got to be a. a um, I don't know what what is it. Who, who can tell me what it is? Please tell me. Let's see. That's not, that's not a simple beholder. Everyone's just excited about it. Yep. Yep. It is amazing. Very nice work, Michael. Uh, I mean, well, when we were talking about Spider-Man, that's got a little bit of a Venom feel. It does. I think. It I'm, does. It, I'm think not sure how much of that is because of the white eyes. Yeah. Right. But, uh, the fact that we were just talking about it. Just talking about it. Yeah, there's all sorts of ways it could possibly be connected, but I'd like to think that Michael also put a little bit of a venom feel into it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks great. Very nice. We want to know what model it is. Cool. Uh, Michael Ball, painting up a dragon. A blue dragon this time. So what have we had? We've had uh, a black dragon, a blue dra uh, green dragon, blue and dragon. And then blue dragon. And then, and then there's so, we had a purple dragon. Purple dragon. Did. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking this one. I think, uh, one of the things I'm liking as well is that the, like the underbelly, the scales along the back of the tail, the spine of the tail, and the um, the wings, mm -hmm. all have that lovely bone color, which is then repeated in the base. So keeps everything. Everything, yeah, it's con very connected to the yeah. 
to the basing. Looks great, Michael. Nice work. Mike Becker. I see what's, what's been done. <laughs> All the names have been grouped. Yeah. Grouped. Alphabetical. Alphabetical. Uh, there we go. It's like we're in school. Yep. But uh, yeah, Mike Becker's painted up this. This is a leader for a Necromunda gang, an Escher gang. And, uh, pardon? Ashes? Uh, I like all the Necromunda stuff, but uh, yeah, the Ashes are definitely cool. We painted some, when did we paint those? Last year, I think? Yeah. Um, or earlier this year? But uh, yeah, they. Mike's done a great job here. I'm particularly a big fan of the um, the leg. You see the like her left mm -hmm. leg there? The um, That black, again, it's, it's very similar to what, I was, what I've been trying on the, the cloak here, but it reads much more as like black leather. Yeah. And uh, yeah, done a really nice Get job that there. That high shine vibe like. going. Yeah, looks great. Very cool. Nice work. Thank you. Oh, Mike Evans, here we go. This is the beholder we know and love. <laughs> now we're back in familiar territory. Yeah. That was the thing that was freaking me out with the other one, is that it had two eyes. Well, it had loads of eyes, but it had two, two main eyes on the body, the main face. Mm -hmm. Hmm? No, I think, I'm sure he painted it that way because I think the sculpt is that way. Um, but this one just has the one eye in the center. But uh, that looks great. And the other thing I love is that there's a rainbow. <laughs> if you look at, look at the uh, yeah, all the different eyes, the eyes across the back. Yay. So again, but if you notice, Mike's got Mike's blue and the um, like the bony protuberances mm -hmm. match uh, the blue dragon we saw earlier. Um, it does. In approach, uh, yeah, it's a it's a solid approach. Looks great. Nice work, Mike. Okay. Oh, check this one out. I'm also curious about the what it's on. Is it but, a griffin? Um, it's a, not this a is griffin. A, uh, this is a griff hound. Yes. So this is from um, Age of Sigma, and yeah, it's a half griffin. Well, it's a, it's a griffin without the wings kind of thing, and more of a that makes sense. dog <laughs> connection. But uh, woof, indeed. But uh, screech woof. Woof screech. <laughs> but uh, I, I was going to make it's something, not my goblin. and I guarantee it was going to come out like a Blue's Clues noise. I, yeah. I stopped much, myself. Much like mine. Yep. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has a blue face. Like you're finding blue feathers. It's you know. Yep. Yep. But no, I'm loving this one. I think. Uh, yeah. Particularly the uh, the transition. Mm -hmm. So you see, the, it's got the collar around there and the little harness, but poking through underneath there. For all the little feathers. The little, little feathers. But yeah, that looks great. Nice work. Oh, check this one. Oh. <laughs> I, I think that's the first time I've seen an owl there outside of those two different poses. Yep. I said, um, yeah, when Sarah posted this up yesterday, I said it looks looks fantastic, and it also looks like it, he's about to bust out a big aria. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm like going to get a stern talking to by this owl there. Like, he's not only going to fight me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because it's very owl. It's yeah, very, it's, it's more owl than bear. But I've learned each different owl bear mini, like they, they have a different ratio yep. of owl to bear. Exactly. All of them horrifying ratios. <laughs> yep. But uh, no, this one looks fantastic. But yeah, I did think he was going to, he's an opera singer as well. Yeah. Yep. Like he's going to defeat me and then he's going to tell me why. Yeah. One of the other things I really love is the, the depth around the eyes. Mm -hmm. It's got that, that black in there and that, so it makes those eyes those angry eyes pop straight out. But yeah, great work, Sarah. Also, shout out to her mug that says paint water. Paint water? <laughs> All right, yep. I feel like I need one of those at home. <laughs> uh, Richard Lishman, a manticore. Ooh. Look at all the mythological beasts. That's a fun color scheme. It is. It's got a very fiery feel. Definitely. Yep. And again, those... Uh, those bright green eyes really pop from that orange face. What song is he going to sing? What song is he, is the? <laughs> yeah, Dave. 
I think he's going to sell me some car insurance. <laughs> We've got a gecko doing it. We've got an emu doing it. Why not a mandicore? Mandicar. <laughs> 15 minutes is too long. Five minutes, you could spend way more on your car insurance. But no, it looks, uh, looks fan oh, joking aside, it looks fantastic. I love the, the sort of purplish feel as well that uh, Richard's got in the, in the reds there. Again, just contrasting really well with the, the yellow mane and the, uh, the yellow stinger on the back. That looks poisonous. It, it does look very poisonous. Poisonous? Venomous. Poisonous. Venomous. Looks very venomous. My bad. I mean, if it's not biting you to inject it into you, is it still venomous? I think so. Yep. Yep. Because if you ingest it and it kills you, then it's poison. Yeah. I, I suspect that if you were to but eat, it, it eat a manticore, you, you might die. It could be both. Let's then assume they're both. <laughs> and let's not eat the manticore. Looks great. Jeff. Oh, yeah. Yep. Love this one, too. Uh, so this is from Rising Sun. And... Uh, yeah, I just love the, my favorite thing here, and it's very cool, but my favorite thing is the, the uh, water, that the sort water of teal good, kind though. of feel. The dragon looks very cold. It does. Like all those nice, cool colors. It does, and, the, and the, I think the water underneath sort of really accentuates that. It really helps it out. Very nice. Good work, Jeff. That was cool. Oh, Steve. It's a crazy Ooh. demon. That's like a cool pose. That is coming at you. Yeah, that's super heavy metal, isn't it? <laughs> yes, oh. that is super heavy metal. <laughs> oh. Everything is this. Uh, yeah, no, it looks uh, looks great, Steve. And I wonder if it, has it just been summoned? It's got those little. Uh, it does look like it's just been Dave, summoned. Dave, when's your album dropping? Never. <laughs> First of never. But uh, yeah, no, it looks great, Steve. Very nice. Those deep reds, always sell it. Cool. Ryan, oh, painting up some, uh, I think these are Storm Talons. I can I'm pretty sure they're Storm Talons uh, from Ooh. GW. There's uh, some modification on the, I think the one on the left there, but yeah, these are looking very cool. The little um, kind of crazy little flying bricks Really, that uh, you look at them and aerodynamically, they should not. No, they should not work. They don't look like they'd be good aerodynamically at all. <laughs> but everything, everything in 40k is all about brute force. So these things just push, like punch their way through the air, coming at you. Okay. Yeah, but I, I love the, the. He's got that classic um, sci-fi color scheme going on. The, the, Gray. You mean the, the Star Wars color? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's appeared somewhere else as well. <laughs> Maybe after Star Wars, but uh, yeah, that that X Wing look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Yep. <laughs> I've used it on a number of things. White, dirty white, orange. And now you're going to go back and you'd be like, that's my Star Wars color scheme. No. Uh, I knew it was all along, but, <laughs> but no, it looks great, Ryan. Good, uh, good work there. Oh, Brett Urquhart. Green a bit Ooh. tricky. Messing with his name. Painting up some oh. mechs. Oh. <laughs> mm, whenever I can't read a name, I read it backwards. <laughs> but, uh, the people, people do all sorts of crazy things on Facebook. I never, I've learned to uh, not ask questions. But uh, yeah, I think these are. That's a um, fun color. I think these are Battletech models. Cool, yeah, the, that sort of uh, like a deep uh, military green. Yeah. Kind of thing. Looking good. Very emeraldy. Yep. <laughs> are there any closer. Star Wars minis out there? Like in the world or here? Because there oh. are in the world. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Calvin, uh, what you want to do is do a search for Star Wars Legion. Uh, by Fantasy Flight Games, and you will find all sorts of crazy Star Wars minis. Um, they've just recently released their second starter set, second two-player starter set, which is for the Clone Wars. Yep. So it's, um, what is it? Clones, clone troopers, and uh, Trade Federation droids. So 
Definitely check that out. The previous one was um, Stormtroopers and Rebels in sort of Endor gear. Uh, right. But yeah, loads of uh, loads of cool Star Wars stuff out there to check out, particularly at the moment. We so, get quite a bit of Star Wars. Yep. We've painted Star Wars. We have, we have indeed. Actually, when uh, if you want to go back through the archives, uh, <laughs> I think we I think Rick and I spent about six weeks painting Star Wars, oh, painting up the entire first starter set. I kind of had a little bit of uh, sort of PTSD after that. <laughs> it was a lot, a lot of models. But yeah, they're very cool. Definitely, uh, definitely neat. But yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, posting your minis in the group. I know we didn't show everything that's uh, been posted up there over the last few weeks, but um, sorry. that's but yeah. As Luna says, sorry. <laughs> 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 but uh, yes, but either post them again or post post more of your uh, latest minis, and we'll make sure that over the uh, the next few weeks we'll be showing those off. Well, I won't be showing them off. You will. I will be here. Yep, I'm running off to the other side of the planet. You're leaving to me me to my own devices. Glitter. Splitter. Glitter episode. Glitter episode. Glitter? Oh dear. Yes, actually, yeah. If you're going to do a glitter episode, please have it be while I'm away. <laughs> All right. I think this guy's about as good as I'm going to get him today. How's I could start looking? up on the other guy. Yep. I think it's looking yeah, great. Yeah. And you've got the base painted. I feel like I'm so slow. Yeah. So slow. Did you say I am? Did you you just are. Say, you you're are. Catch up. Catch up. Hurry up, Dave. You, you have more details on yours, though, that you've been adding in. I've been, been doing I a bit tried there. to focus on, like... On on uh, where the light hits. Highlights. <laughs> Highlights, yeah. Those things. <laughs> yeah, those. Whatever those are. Cool. Um, which some of it worked out really well. I really like the color shift. I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I put them there, but the uh, color shift on his tunic. Right. Yeah. I really like how that ended up popping out. Cool. Oh, you can't really see it quite as well. <laughs> <laughs> On the camera? Yeah. It's all the lights. They're washing it out. But uh, uh, as, it, as it comes around, you can kind of see the, the shift. There we go. Yep. I don't know. For sure. Yeah. I just noticed that my guy has a li I didn't shake the, uh, the flesh contrast paint well enough when I started. So he has a little bit of a gloss kind of look on his forehead. Do a little highlight, run a little uh, matte varnish over it. Just so, I mean, I'm sure he would be sweating. <laughs> I'm sure in miniature form he doesn't want to look like he's sweating. You know, I always, in the mists of battle, wonder to myself, do I look like I need a powder? Do I look sweaty? Like a quick, yeah. Hand towel, please. No hand towels? Okay, hang on, wait. There we go. Okay, yep, yeah, there we go. A little bit of that. Kinda, wanna make his gloves dark. Yeah, the gloves dark. Oh, okay, just to sort of differentiate them a little bit more. Yeah, they kinda the, blend uh, in. From his arm there. I'm like, you know what? That's not fashion. Not fashion at all. Because I also am consistently worried about, you know. Fashion? Fashion while I'm in the heat of battle. Fashion. Okay. Will Dave approve of this t shirt? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're not worried about that. No. There we go. Just a quick. Do a couple of quick highlights of um, a dark gray on the some of these leather straps here. Yeah, 
Yep, there's a company called Turbo Dork who do um, metal colored metallic paints and color shift paints. Um, I mean, of course, having said all of the, the things about not being a big fan of that approach, um, just recently I, I can't remember if I mentioned it on the show or not, but I repainted a, um, I think it got like a 124th scale, 124th? Scale, oh, or 112th scale Harley Davidson. Oh. Um, a friend of mine, her father died, and he was a big, um, big fan of riding. And he had a Harley Davidson in particular blue that wasn't available um, commercially. So she picked up a red Harley Davidson and sent it to me, and I repainted it for her. And I used a Turbo Dork mm -hmm. uh, metallic blue. Yeah, worked uh, worked very well. Went ran perfectly through my um, airbrush. Um, it was neat. Had great coverage. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the paints are paints are good. I wouldn't choose them for most of my own personal projects, but that's just me. I mean, not Turbo Dork, but I mean. The colored metallics. But we've been over that already, haven't we? You lack the whimsy. I lack the whimsy. That's my deal. So much of my life can be described by that, that one phrase. <laughs> lacks whimsy. Lacks whimsy. But hey, that's my cross to bear. Quick paint of the base. And here we done. It's kind of funny, at the moment I'm working on the f February article for Painting Happy Little Minis that'll be in Game Trade Magazine. Mm -hmm. And it's basing the basics. Ooh. And then the March issue will be basing the advanced. That doesn't have the same ring to it. It doesn't, no. <laughs> but sadly, there's no other word that means advanced that has the word base in it. Uh, but yeah, so in there, there'll be a little section saying, sometimes it's just perfectly okay to paint your bases black and leave it at that. So there we go. He is now out on the spinner. What uh, colors did you use? What colors did I use? Uh, in general, so I used uh, the contrast paint Gulliman Flash uh, to paint his face. Can you put him on the spinner with him? Spinner with him? Okay. Here it comes. Uh, so that first for the uh, the flesh is nice and quick to do because it's just uh, just his face that's sort of uh, exposed. Then uh, contrast paint. That's the wildwood. I use that on the, um, like his leather armor. Leather jerk in there. I use the basilicanum gray here. You just wanted to really slow down the spinner, right, Leona? Okay, cool. Excellent. So I use the basilicanum gray for the, um, for the sleeves and the, the bottom of his tunic there. Uh, it's underneath. Then, oh, sorry, I also used the wild wood on his um, boots and the straps for his armor. I'll take those off. I used these colors. Uh, pretty much then I went and painted the, uh, the rest of the model, most of the model black. With that, I used burnt red for the basing, uh, the base of those uh, red pants of his. Highlighted that up by mixing in some bloody red from the Vallejo Game Color range. Blood. Blood. It's a little bit bright for actual blood, but great for cartoon blood. Uh, then another Game Color paint, Tinny Tin, followed by some gun metal. Now it's almost never going to spin. Okay. 
cut in metal gray. So slow. So taking that off. The uh, highlights on his on the silver. Taking this opportunity to clean things up. Right. <laughs> no like, talk more, Dave. Talk more. Talk, talk lots. <laughs> okay. Uh, shining silver. Let's use some of the highlights on the um, on his greaves, on the shield, and his sword. There. And the. What do you call it? Um, so, yeah, when I started messing around with his hair, hanging that in there. There, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks cool. All cleaned up. I'll take that off. I used uh, a mix of the black from Vallejo and the Idrian flesh from P3. So just to darken that down and get a good base for him, uh, for his hair there. And then highlight it up with um, one of my favorites, beige brown. Very nice. Leona, don't ask me to remember what I used. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, the um, the cloak. Oh, going back the other way now. I uh, started out black, added in some. Where is it? There it is. Added in some of the Sons of Horus green. And then finally, uh, to get those final highlights in there, some of the model color ivory. Nice. Yeah. A lot of paint. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of odd. And yeah, he comes out and he looks, still looks fairly neutral, brown and gray and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I've talked. I think I've talked before about color recipes and that kind of thing. Um, having uh, a lot of these these colors that I used on on this, I use them a lot for a lot of the other models that I paint, so I know what they're going to look like. So I have that expectation in my head. Okay, well, if I want it to look like this, I'll use that color recipe. If I want to use like that, look like that, use a different recipe. And I can just assemble them almost like a jigsaw puzzle in, oh, my, yeah. in my head beforehand. So the only thing that was um, that I wasn't sure about was using that uh, Sons of Horus green, uh, but I think it worked out pretty well. There we go. Excellent. Oh, I like that they both have red. Yeah, yep. it's almost like we coordinated. Yep. But yeah, I mean, those could those two guys could be definitely on the same um, same unit tray. <laughs> they look cohesive. Having that dark brown on the the main armor, oh yeah, the leather armor is um, is important there, and that the little pop of red to to get that connection as well. That looks good. Makes everything stand out more. Yep. Very nice. Woohoo! We still have yeah. a little bit of time. We do. We've gone in <laughs> crush, <laughs> This is the first it. time that's ever happened. It is. <laughs> I thought we were getting a little bit silent and a little bit too early. Uh, um, <laughs> hashtag Stormcrow. You're we a bit, should go yeah. over that again. I was yeah. about to say, we haven't <laughs> mentioned that for a little bit of time. But we have two, um, two boxes here. So we have the Stormcrow archers that we're giving away to somebody and uh, the Stormcrow mercenaries that we're giving away to somebody else, uh, courtesy of Come On Games. Um, all you have to do, yeah, pop hashtag Stormcrow in uh, any of the chats that you happen to be in. Leona will uh, have a look through those and uh, randomly select winners. I've had a on Facebook. Oh. Ooh, possibly a dumb question. Never any of those. Why are all your dropper bottles upside down? Oh, these ones? <laughs> yep, definitely. Definitely not a um, stupid question. Uh, one of the things that, um, that can happen with, uh, with bottles sitting around doing anything is that uh, paints will separate a little bit, um, pigment will drop to the bottom, uh, le and your, the medium that they're suspended in just kind of rises to the top. If they're like this, most of the pigment is here, and the medium's at the top. So it just means that when you shake them, if you don't shake them quite well enough, you'll get more pigment out with your paint um, when you put them out on the, on the palette. 
Um, if it was the other way around and you didn't shake them quite enough, you'd get more of the medium out, so they'd be a, bit, a little bit sort of sloppy and not as usable. Uh, the other thing that it can do is if you have a slight air gap, a little bit of it, air leakage, Ooh. and it's up like this, and the air gets in and it can form a, like a crust on the inside. That's gross. I think. Um, but if they're up like this, much like um, like wine bottles, mm -hmm. you store wine bottles upside down or so that the cork, um, or basically the, the wine is always touching all of the cork, mm -hmm. Can't, doesn't let that dry, air, like cork dry out and the air get in. Um, it's basically that same, same sort of thing. You, you know, do I didn't that know that about wine bottles. Yeah? <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> That's if you're still drinking wine that has corks in it. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, in, in my, from my home country, most of them are screwed up. You know, it's much I easier would to love get into. It. Yeah, I, I'm really bad at popping corks right. on wine bottles. Australian wines, you don't have to worry. Yeah, it's all, another reason to go to Australia. Yep, they're all twist if I drink a, If I drink enough wine in Australia, I won't care about the giant spiders. Exactly. Or right? the giant burning spiders. The flaming oh. spiders that run towards you. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. For, for, think, for thinking of giant spiders oh. running towards you on fire. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not about that life. I'm, uh, no. Fair no. enough. It takes a hearty soul. It takes one without whimsy. <laughs> that's what it is. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's one reason that, um, that the paints here are all... Upside down. All right, Dave, you have how many minutes left? Ten minutes Ten left? Ten minutes left? Yeah, paint a mini. Go. <laughs> you can do all the talking, and I'll do all the painting. All right, go, go, go. Ten minutes. Speed paint. Speed round. Speed. This is so much more fun, though. Okay. Yeah. Go, Dave, go. It's a completely untouched nope, mini. Actually. It's only been primed. Yeah, I did the face. So the face has been done. Don't want to give it everybody else. Like a false sense. <laughs> a false sense of <laughs> ability. Go also, I think go, it's a, like a, a fun little experiment, too. So. See, it? speed painting, as, as terrifying as it sounds, is actually a really good way to get out of your comfort zone and to practice painting, yep. whether it's minis or whether it's um, painting traditionally or anything like that, because you, at some point, stop caring and you can actually get a lot more accomplished than you think. Yep. Um, so if you're scared of speed painting, don't be. Try it out. Give it a go. I will mention that the, uh, the shambling mound that I painted uh, last week at PAX with uh, Realm Smith TV, mm -hmm. um, because it was, oh, I've got two hours to paint this model and I don't have to stick to a particular color scheme or anything and I can just have fun. I went in and did like kind of sketched on it first. I yeah. was like, okay, I want this area, these areas to be mostly bone. I want these areas to be mostly light green. These areas to be mostly dark green. These areas to be mostly brown. And then I could come back and uh, kind of blend them together, which was a lot of fun. So yeah, it was like 15 minutes of blocking in base colors and then an hour and a half of blending them together to make them look reasonable. <laughs> Jason says five bucks says he can do it. Oh, I'll take that bet. Wait. Probably should. Pardon? Yeah, bet it can get done. Go, 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 go. Okay, I'm gonna try. I don't think I'll quite make all of it. I won't get the base done. We won't count the base. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you. Oh, curses. <laughs> I just noticed it looks like he doesn't, he isn't wearing a glove. I thought he was wearing like a gauntlet. Uh -huh. But it looks like more he has a bracer. Tell you what, now he's wearing a glove. I'm just slapping contrast on this guy, calling it a day. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I must say that I'm a huge fan of this Wildwood uh, contrast paint. It's um, got great depth to it. Excellent coverage. And I'm actually going to use it because we're 
painting with it under a time crunch. I'm going to use it as a where I'd normally come back and repaint with um, with black mm -hmm. to use it under metal. I'm just going to use this under there. Okay. I feel like I want to sing like a like a jingle. A jingle? What sort of jingle? I don't know, like a Go Go Power Rangers, except it's Go Go Dave. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair enough. You should totally do that. <laughs> That's when you contrast paint. <laughs> yep. That would actually be a really fun competition, is who can get, like, speed paint, who can not only paint the quickest, but the most accurately. So you would right. judge on time, but also to make it fair. Yep. It's like anyone could just be like, dunk. I'm done. Done. Finished. Dunk and flick. Dun yep. <laughs> Welcome to today's episode, Dunk and Flick. <laughs> They're my favorite donuts. <laughs> okay. You see, I'm not going to get this done in 10 minutes. I'm excited to come back and um, actually spend a little bit of time on, on this guy. Because mm -hmm. I can work out what's going on with his boots and his the armor on his legs. There's some interesting... Uh footwear yeah. going on with these minis. Um, they all have different shoes. My shoes that the my one mini had versus these shoes are different. They're all different yeah. boots. Yeah. Different, different bracers, different. It's a, it's a good mashup. Yep. I suppose when you're a mercenary, you have to provide your own, your own equipment. Okay, so we've got that done. Where's the Basilicanum Gray? I should put him in the little uh, little holder there. You can do it, Dave. You can do it. Go, go, Dave. I feel I need pom poms. Pom poms. <laughs> go, go, Dave. No, you go, don't need pom poms. Go, Dave. What do you have against pom poms, Dave? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Chasing thunder, 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 Dave. Ho! <laughs> the power of this paintbrush, Dave. I gotta find a. I want to paint red. Maybe I'll paint his uh, the sleeves of his shirt red. Can we do that? Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Got to make him match, Dave. He can't, yeah. he can't be a heathen. <laughs> no. Can you imagine coming to battle and all of your bros have you know your colors going and you forget? Yeah, that you would be pretty bad, red? wouldn't it? This battle, we wear red. <laughs> you show up in blue. I'm the worst. It's a fashion catastrophe. You're a Pardon? I said you're a Stark. Stark? Yeah. That's yeah. why you show up in blue. All right. There we go. Okay. I know that at the moment, because I'm moving so fast with it, that. I won't notice some of the, where I splash over onto other areas. But as soon as we pop it on the spinner, it'll be like front and center. <laughs> Just like everything's brown, that's fine. Yeah. That's a good base color for everything. Five minutes. Five minutes is all that's all we've got. Yeah, okay. that's all you got. You gotta go faster, Dave. Five minutes. Dave. I do have to go faster. More detail. More paint. More. Actually, I'm gonna need to shake up that Nasdaq yellow for me. All right. Get that ready to go. Shout out to Necromodes Molds on Kickstarter. And then, <laughs> I was trying to figure this out for a minute. Are they Skechers? That's all I wear in reference to the shoes. <laughs> the shoes, right. Nice. I wish they were Skechers. That, that's comfy. Yeah. i got to admit, shoe-wise, I was a little bit disappointed uh, earlier this year. Oh. When I discovered that uh, Vans are discontinuing their Baxters. What? I know. 
killing me. I haven't worn Baxter's for the last decade. I need another pair of. Put them away uh, now. You have to. You have to find something new, Dave. You'll have to explore. I mean, they're available. You'll have to get Skechers. You, you can pick them up on eBay, but. Uh, you could get Heelys. <laughs> 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 of all the things I could get, Healy's is like the last one. <laughs> I would be falling over all over the place. That's why they'd be good for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, somebody asked about mixing contrast paints before. I'm going to experiment, just add a little bit of this ivory color into the Nasdreg and see how that goes. See how that impacts the, the blonde hair. Uh, not too much. Hmm. The, the highlights are, are still very, very yellow. It's kind of knocked back some of the, the yeah. shading. I used some of the, uh, a little bit on the side that I was trying to have a little bit of shadow on. I used some brown to kind of tone it down. Tone it down. Right. It wants that brassy blonde, of course. <laughs> yep. There we go. Sorry if I'm pulling that off shot. <laughs> I'm under a time crunch. <laughs> Chase says, this is the best way to start my Thursdays. This is the best way to start any Thursday. Yep. Let me just torture Dave. Dave, paint faster. <laughs> Dave, faster. paint more. Well, here's, here's the worst part is that the, the black there hasn't dried yet, so I can't, <laughs> can't paint the shield. Oh, well, it says Skechers of Speed. So he was, you could also get light up Skechers. See, that's probably more my jam. It's the light up Skechers? The light up Skechers, yeah. That's fair. Just freak out all the kids when I go <gasps> drop my girls off at school. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that. Because they'd be like, I, was I want teaching. those, but I can't wear them. I'm not allowed to wear them to school. My sister told me that the one thing I was never allowed to buy my niece were light up shoes. Okay. So that was the first thing you bought? <laughs> 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 I was like, really? Let her have some fun. I think I'm going to get us a matching pair of Heelys. Okay. I can just see that video now. <laughs> Out in the parking lot, me crashing into a car. <laughs> Hopefully the car isn't moving at the time. <laughs> but uh, there we go. I'm gonna make some of that and some of that. Okay, you have one minute. Shh. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Just one. Just one? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try and get some. Oh boy. Faster, Dave. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get really up close. <laughs> You're almost there. Yeah, I know. That's actually really good for the time being. <laughs> Thanks. For 10 minutes of painting? Yeah, for 10 I'm, minutes speed paint. I'm pretty the, happy. Whole, the whole mini has paint on it, guys. It's like, it's there. You can bust out a unit and. What's that? Oh, time. No, my, my clock says four. Yeah. Time. Put it up, Dave. Come oh, on. what? Hang on. <laughs> no, no, it's four. Speed painting done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Is that really good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, see, look, now <laughs> it, looks, it looks like my guy has a brother. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Sword bros. Sword bros. Sword bros for life! Yeah! Rawr! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things. I think with, um, if you've got that idea, you know what your colors, what colors need to go where. Mm -hmm. um, just get in there and, and apply them. Uh, go. Yep. I think I can come back and definitely do, uh, see he's got lots of banding around the, those tunics and the edges yeah. of those tunics. I think it'd be cool to come back and do some highlighting on those or to even change the change the color, throw some more gray in there perhaps, or different um, different sort of hue of brown. That makes sense. And 
But yeah, and no, I, I think um, I think it's been a, been a lot of fun. These these models are really nice. They're good beautiful models. Beautiful models. Tons of detail. Yeah, yeah. So they take that take the contrast paint paint really well, and it takes some dry brushing. But uh, ten yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's good. Done and done. Ten minutes to paint job is ten times better than I can do in three days. Well, RuneStorm said it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Well. Which in Australia means not bad. <laughs> right, cool. Yep, there you go. It's, it's, it's a shame you didn't say, ah, it's pretty good, not bad, pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well. Cool. Excellent. Excellent job. Ten minutes. Woohoo. <laughs> Can okay. Wipe the sweat from your brow. I can. I didn't even break a sweat. You didn't even break a sweat. No. Well. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> Hashtag Stormcrow if you want to be in the running for winning either of these two. Yep. This one or this one. Two the different archers. winners. Two different boxes. Yep. Uh, Leona will pick a winner or both winners after the show. So make sure you're also part of our social media on our Facebook page, the Happy Little Minis Facebook page, if you want to know that you've won. Yep. Um, but that brings us to the end. It does. Here no. we are. I'm Gretchen. Well, sorry, oh. before we go to that, oh, to that yeah. point, I'm going to say, um, once again, it's been fantastic sharing 2019 with you. Oh, that's and, right. Uh, painting. So I won't be here next week or the I week was, after. I was just prepared. I was like, goodbye, Dave. <laughs> Yo, you're out of here. Gone forever. <laughs> but I'm excited. Are we back on the, we're back on the 2nd, right? 2nd of January. You'll be back on the 2nd of January. I'll be back before then. I'll be back next Thursday. Next Thursday. <laughs> Be all Gretchen and guest all the time. And guest, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Closing cool. out the year. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Yes. Uh, Bye, Dave. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Dave. We'll miss you. I will miss you guys too. We'll see you next year. Yep. <laughs> Until next year. But we'll see you next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and on that note, I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.